What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. This video starts my investing series. I've been talking about it. Here it is. So this is going to be the kickoff video to that. And today I'm just going to get into some basics about the stock market. I'm not going to get too technical. I'm not going to make this video boring by any means. Basically what I'm saying is this video is all about you. This is for anyone who has misunderstandings about investing, who wants to learn more about investing and wants to know more about the why. Why is it so important? Why is it being pushed so much, especially on my channel? I talk about it just about every single video you should invest. Why is it so important? A lot of folks think, you know, I don't make that much money. Why should I even think about investing at this time? I'm especially here for anyone who was intimidated by investing in stocks and the stock market in general. I'm here for every single one of you. Because one thing about it is I've been intimidated about the stock market. Like intimidation was so strong that it stopped 21 year old me from actually investing. Even though I had the money to do it, I had the means to do it. And I was fairly educated on why investing is important. And I still didn't do it because I was so afraid of prices dropping to the point of zero and never recovering basically. And that's an extremely irrational place to come from. So I'm gonna jump into all of that in this video. So it's been a long enough intro. I'm gonna jump straight into it. The first thing we're gonna jump into is why is investing important? Why should you do it? Is it even for you to do? So I'm gonna let you answer that question for yourself as I describe to you the why behind investing. Why do people invest and why is it so beneficial? So, so everybody who makes money in life, there is one constant. You have to work for your money at some capacity and you have to perform. That's gonna be the underlying thing for this whole video. You have to perform. And this is true for every human being on earth. If you have a full-time job, you have to keep performing, not only for job security, but for promotions and raises down the line, because that's gonna keep putting you in a position to make more and more money every year. If you keep making the same amount of money every year, inflation is going to absolutely destroy you and you'll actually be moving backwards. So you have to keep performing. Entertainers, actors, rappers, singers, guess what? They have to perform. Athletes definitely have to perform. If you're a YouTuber, your content has to perform, which means you, at some capacity, have to perform. You have to do your research correctly, you have to understand the algorithm, and you have to understand your audience, and you have to be good on camera, while also being yourself. It's like a really weird balance of a lot of things. What I'm saying is, pretty much anything you can think of, you have to perform. That's what's always gonna be linked to the amount of money that you could potentially make is your overall performance. I'm gonna stop saying that word because I've said it a million times now, but you get the point. The problem with this is we're all human and at some point our performance may slip, we might get sick, we might get hurt. A lot of things happen, life happens to everyone. You could lose a loved one, you could be going through a breakup. Things in your life can somehow affect your performance. And even if your performance doesn't slip, your ability and capacity to make money can start to slip. One safety net for that is investing in stocks. Investing in stocks every month, doing your proper research, investing in the best companies in the world, ensures one thing, your money is going to be secure. It might fluctuate, it might go down sometimes. Sometimes it'll just go down rapidly during a recession. It might get scary, but for the most part, it's going up most of the time. Throughout history, the stock market has been up way more than it's been down. People have retired off the stock market. People have created generational wealth from the stock market. And it's been happening for a very, very, very long time. And I know you might think of rich people who have the means to put millions of dollars into the stock market, it's not just for them, it is for everyone. That's why every one of you watching this video that has a full-time job, you probably have a 401k. And if you invest early enough, and if you invest enough of your salary into it, you can 100% be in the million by the time you retire, or even 20 years before you retire. It just depends on where your priorities are and what your investment choices are. And it all goes back to this other one thing, besides performance, family. Do you have a family? And do you care about them? And do you care about the future of your family? And do you care about yourself and your future and what you would like to do, not only for yourself, but for your family and for anyone else? The answer to all these questions is probably yes. Okay, wouldn't it be worth to invest, say, $500 a month 
every single month from age, I don't know, let's say you're 25, from age 25 until 65. And then that adding up to be in the millions. Like the amount you invest will be just $500 a month. So that alone isn't going to become a million. The, the growth attached to that is what's going to put your money into the millions. <clears throat> That's where the opportunity is. You want to be able to make those smart decisions while you're young because once you're older or once you're even like in a middle age, like say 40 to 45, 50 years old, right? You want to have options to do certain things. You never want to be in a bind where it's like, man, all I have to rely on as my hedge for inflation is my job giving me a raise every year. We know jobs don't give raises every single year. During the pandemic, no freaking body got raises. I guarantee you that, or at least very few people did, right? Fortune 500 company or not, it did not matter. People, some people straight up didn't get paid at all. A lot of people got laid off. You want to be in a position where your whole family isn't at risk because you didn't prepare because the hedge for your inflation is 100% your responsibility. It's not just your jobs. As a matter of fact, your job is almost always going to pay you under what inflation is. So if you get a 4% raise per year, inflation is probably 8% that year. You're not going to see a ton of inflationary raises that coincide specifically with inflation. You're just not going to see it. You might have a you might have a cost of living increase, but it's not necessarily going to be the exact number of which the cost of living went up. You get what I'm saying? So there's a reason behind all of this. You have people you care about, you have things that you care about. You want to have flexibility, you want to have freedom. You want to have a lot of good things going for you as you get older because time is going to go by anyway. So why not invest say 500 or more a month while you're young and you'll be able to increase it incrementally over the years. At first, it may not seem like it's doing that much, but once you do it for a little while, like a year or two years, and then the stock market runs up like crazy, and then you look and you have like an extra $4,000 in your stock account, that's a gentle reminder of the type of promise you can get from investing. That's a gentle reminder of what investing can do for you. And then if you look at something like your 401k and see that when you first started, you might have had like 2000 bucks in it, but then you look five short years later, it's up to 50k. That is the power of compounding. And if that sounds like a crazy example that literally happened to me. So I don't want to hear it. It's not a crazy example at all. It can happen if you do the right things with your money. And that's the whole purpose of this channel. It's not just about saving. It's not just about being frugal. It's not just about learning how to move out of your parents' house. This channel is a holistic channel on personal finances and I want to address investing today. So that is the why. So you can answer the first question for yourself. Is investing for me? Do I really make enough to do that? Does, does it really? You're thinking about it the wrong way if you feel like I don't make enough to do it. The only time that you should hold off on investing, in my opinion, is if you don't have anything in your savings and investing is the only thing that you have going for you and that's the only thing you want to put your money in and you have massive credit card debt. You need to pay off your credit card debt. You need to make sure you set a standard for yourself. Like if you want to save $2,000, $5,000 first before you start uh, investing, Cool, you can 100% do that. If you want to have $10,000 before you start investing, cool, do that. But also set deadlines for yourself and be honest with yourself. How long is it going to take for me to reach those goals? And actually be on it because it's always going to go back to this. If you don't give yourself a goal or a timeline, you're just going to drag your feet and you might even get to the point where, ah, why should I do this? I'm not one of those gifted people who are, I'm not one of those gifted or lucky people who are able to invest because my savings ain't right and my bills are too much. Don't sit there and argue for your limitations. Just don't do it. Be real with yourself, understand your limitations and fight against them with every single thing you've got and then get to a point where you feel comfortable investing. That's all I'm gonna say. But you're, in the back of your mind, you wanna think about your family. When you think about things that are outside of you, that can also push you forward toward investing. So anyway, I rambled on long enough about the why. That is the why. What is yours? Now, so now we're going to kind of break down a stock. What is it? What's its purpose? What does it do type of thing, right? So the whole purpose of stocks, the whole purpose of the stock market as a whole, including bonds, we'll talk about bonds some other time, but the whole purpose for these assets and investments is to make money. 
the reasons investments are a thing is to make money. So you have to think about that when you're thinking back ahead. Oh, no, it's too risky. Do you really know enough about investing to say that it's risky? Or are you just going by things that you heard, things that you read on the Internet, things that you read on Reddit? Is that really what you want to say? Because investing in stocks and different variations of investments, and they are all designed to put money in your pocket over a course of time. Stocks, bonds, investment funds, which we'll talk about some other time, all of those things are designed to put money in your pocket over time, even if it's little by little. It's, put, it's designed to go up not down. Do they go down sometimes? Absolutely. But they're designed to make you money. So that's the first mindset shift that I had to make. If the purpose of these things and the reason that they were invented was to make whoever owns them money, then maybe I should maybe I should rethink my theory a little bit about the stock market being too risky. But anyway, you're going to have some stocks that go up very aggressively, but they also tend to go down very aggressively. These are what you would call volatile stocks. They tend to be companies that are newer, cutting edge, they could really break through a space or completely disrupt an industry, but they also might not have the financial backing nor the experience to keep that up, which there's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of those out there. And there's also the more experienced companies and, you know, what I would call classic companies that everyone around the world knows about. These move a little more steadily, a little less exciting. They'll go up little by little by little, but they rarely go down. And when they do go down, they go down by a little bit. And these are typically companies with great balance sheets, great reputations. They've been around forever. You probably use their products. You might be using one of their products right now watching this video. Anyway, when you want to buy stock in a company, you buy it in shares. So we'll pick on one of my favorite companies ever, Microsoft, right? So, so let's say in total, Microsoft is like a giant circle and it's split into pie slices. Only the pie slices are represented by 7.4 billion shares. So basically there's as many Microsoft shares as there are people on earth, right? Let's say you want a little piece of the pie. So now you buy one Microsoft share. Let's say the one share costs 300 bucks. Now you own a share of Microsoft. Let's say the price for a share of Microsoft goes up by 30%. Now your $300 just turned into $390 because it increased. Now I know that's not much, but that's just one share. Now, now one share by itself, that ain't gonna do that much, right? But one share over the course of every month for years can mean something because let's say even if $300 doubled, let's say, the share went up by 100%, and so now $300 is $600. You're still not rich, but you did gain $300. So the power of doing things like this, investing in really, really, really good companies over the course of time, that can get you to different levels in life. And so now instead of just having one share of Microsoft, let's say you have 15 shares of Microsoft. And let's say the average price you got into Microsoft was $300, which means once you average out the amount of money you paid for all 15 of your shares, it's $300, right? So let's say that's that goes up 30%. So 15 times 300, boom. So you own $4,500 worth of Microsoft shares. And that goes up by 30%. That's adding... $1,350 to what you're owning. I don't know anybody who's just gonna hand you that for free. So what I'm saying is it's a very low effort way of making money in the backgrounds when you're really not doing that much except for a little bit of research up front. That's the beautiful thing about investing. So now imagine you go from 15 to 30 shares and then 30 shares to 90 shares and then you eventually you have 100 shares, 200 shares. These things are going to happen over the years as you have more money to invest. But just seeing this power up front, yeah, at first it's not going to be that much. But, I mean, come on. It takes time to do everything. Last time I checked, it takes time to get a high school diploma. It takes time to get a college degree. It takes time to get a master's degree, a doctorate degree. It takes time to get an MD. It takes time to get promoted at work. It takes time to get good at basketball. It takes time to get good at martial arts. It takes time to get good at cooking. Matter of fact, it takes time to get out of bed in the morning. So time is going to go by anyway. I personally would rather have my money working for me behind the scenes where I'm not even looking at it. 
because that's a good feeling. And sometimes, I'll be perfectly honest with you, sometimes I look at my account and I've made more in the stock market than a day at work. And I make good money at work, mind you. But sometimes in the stock market, in a single day, I'll make more than I make in a single day at work. Sometimes double or even triple what I would make in a single day at work. And the thing about investing, my approach is long-term approach. I'm not just looking at that like, oh, I'm going to sell it and cash out and put it in my bank account. That literally defeats the purpose of investing. The whole point was to not have it sitting in a bank account. The whole point was to have it grow and compound and grow and grow and grow and multiply and multiply. And then when it's time to retire, even before it's time to retire, I can just sit back, relax, even though I'm not the type to do that. I like to have that option if it's available and being able to do so without having to worry about money coming in from other areas. Now, in an, in an ideal space, you're getting money from work, you're getting money from a side hustle or from overtime or something, or maybe you have a passion thing or like a business going on, and you have stock market income as well, which you can withdraw at any time or you can keep letting grow. That's the ideal circumstance, but in so many people's lives, life is going to happen. And no matter what, you're not necessarily going to be happy when life happens, but at least you have other options to fall back on. And that's the point. Investing is an amazing thing. And once you understand it and you understand compound interest and you understand that if your investment account grows 30% over and over and over and over, and over and over and over for years, you're gonna have a lot of money. Now, it's not realistic to believe that it'll be 30% every single year, but some people have those types of returns. Maybe yours will be 8% or 10%. That's better than 0% and it's compounding. And on top of that, you're still investing more and more and more and more. And every single month, you keep investing. And then you do a little more research, you become a little more knowledgeable. You keep investing more and more and more. And you keep it as simple as possible. Next thing you know, you have six figures in your account. Next thing you know, you have a million in your account. Two million, three million. A lot of people have the money to invest thousands into the stock market and won't do it because they're nervous or they're scared or they don't understand about investing or the different methods to invest. That is what I'm here for. And that is what my course is gonna be teaching you all about. Anyway, there is some downsides to investing. One of the downsides to stocks though, is that they can be risky and they can be pricey. And if you buy stock in a highly reputable company, chances are you're gonna be spending quite a bit for it. It could be anywhere between say 180, all the way into the 300s, 400s, 500s, sometimes thousand plus. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you might catch them on sale where you where you can get them between 150 and 800, but a lot of times it's, it's gonna be like that. But you know, the amazing thing about stocks is the price range wasn't always like that. I kind of just made that one up, just comparing it to the last stocks that I was just looking at like off the top of my head. But just last year, there was a stock called Nvidia that was like worth $112 per share. Now it is triple. And my stock market account is looking good because of it. I'm happy, but you see how I'm smiling? Because it's good. I like those types of results. Matter of fact, let me check. $385. I wish I would have bought more last year. But that's besides the point. And no, this is not me telling you, go buy this stock right now. I'm just giving you an example of a stock that used to be in that range of, you know, 112 to 150, and now it's three freaking $185 per share. Could you imagine having just 10 of those, 10 shares of that when you got in at like $112? I don't care what anybody says, life gets a little easier when you look into multiple accounts and they're all making money. That's all I'm saying. You got a savings account that's making a, a very little bit of money. You have a high yield savings account that's making, okay, well, Interest rates have raised, so it's making decent money. You might have a business account where, like in my case, YouTube and Amazon are paying me. Okay, cool. That's making some money. Awesome. And then you look at the stock market account. That's making money. That's a good feeling. Nobody can tell me different. Um, even if you have a job with great money, that's awesome. But there's nothing like having that plus other streams of income. And it's, it's just it's an amazing feeling. And it makes you kind of want more because it's not about being greedy but it's wanting to if i can do this i can do this you know what i mean it's like if you're outside shooting basketball and you make a three-pointer and it's you know swoosh i can't make a swoosh sound but oh man i want to do that again you do it again 
and like and you might miss a few in between but it makes you crave greatness it makes you want to keep doing it again and again and again that's with anything in life you do something well you want to do more of it you want to reproduce what you just did so you can have optimal results for yourself and for your family why would you not want that so don't think of it as like a bad thing for wanting more now the downside to stock market is when people get greedy in the sense of oh this penny stock is projected to go from a few cents to ten dollars per share in that exact voice and what do people do they react and this is what i was going to talk about people's reactions and emotions highly impact the stock market so during covid boom the whole stock market gets hit completely just drops i was scared during covid i still invested though i was i was scared though but i knew so many people that took all their money out of their 401ks i knew so many people that took all their money out of their bank accounts kept their cash under their mattresses it was it was a crazy time for sure and i know it might sound like i'm exaggerating but i'm not and, you know, at the time they might have had $20,000 in their 401k because these are fairly young people who have just started out in their careers. Let's say $20,000 in their 401k and COVID might have knocked 8,000 of it down. Now they have 12,000 or 12,500 left, right? Oh my gosh, I have to pull this out before it goes to zero. If they would have kept it in there, today it would be worth 50k, 40k, 55k. And I'm not just making these numbers up. I'm comparing it to the brand new 401k that I opened up five years ago, and that was what my numbers were looking like. And I'm not just making these numbers up, like these are real numbers. I know it sounds kind of hard to fathom, but when you're putting 8% of your paycheck into your 401k every single time that you get paid, and then the company is matching half of that, so they're throwing free money in, then the investments are growing, and then that percentage is compounding on that percentage that's how it can go from 20K to 50K. Plus the stock market definitely ran up for sure between COVID and now, for sure it did. But when you listen to other people and you take all your money out, those people don't have 50K in their 401K. How could they? They freaking took the whole thing out. And guess what happens when you withdraw from your 401K? You get hit, you get taxed. So you just caused your money-making asset to be a depreciating asset. Just saying. So a big downside could be yourself. It could be your emotions. And there's a ton of downsides, but I don't have <laughs> I don't have the kind of time to give you every bit of the stock market today. Plus, that's what my course is for. So check out my course if you're interested in learning about changing your life and learning about the stock market and learning about how you can invest and how to make investment decisions and how to break down a stock and how to understand the stock market and how to find stocks that no one knows about and all that good stuff. How to Make Your Money Work For You University. That's not what it's called, but that's low-key a cool name. I might consider changing my course name to that now that I think about it. Anyway, with that said, you don't have a ton of reasons to fear about the stock market because, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, people have been retiring from the stock market for decades and decades and decades and decades, and your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents if they knew about 401ks, it is a lot of folks have not been educated on it. And even to this day, I've had to coach several people at work. If you don't know, I'm a manager at work. I've coached a lot of people at work about what a 401k is because they weren't even invested. They didn't even start their 401k yet. And I didn't judge them, but I was like, well, do you understand the impact of not doing it? It's always going to be up to you. I can't force you to do anything, but how do you expect to retire without a 401k? Oh man, how do I sign up? You know? And to this day, they come to me thanking me. Thank you for showing me how to set that up. I never knew anything about it. It's all the way up to blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So that's the power behind it. You don't have to have that much money going into the stock market for you to make money from it. Think about how a 401k works. 8% or 4% or 6%, whatever the percentage of your salary that you're putting in your 401k, that's not a lot of money at all. But you see the power that it has behind it especially when you have a Fortune 500 company matching you, just saying. But you don't have a ton of reason to fear because the stock market historically has recovered time after time after time. Now, the thing that sucks is if you retire, then a recession hits and your whole, like your millions of dollars tanks and you go down $400,000. Yeah, that's going to hurt. You're going to feel it, but just hold on to it. Selling it right then would be like the worst thing you could possibly do. And I can't think of a single expense in life that would cost you a significant amount of money. Like that would cost you 
like six hundred thousand dollars at that time. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying you would have to be a very unlucky person to one retire into a recession, two be met with a crazy expense that exceeds what you have left over if you've been investing since you were in your early 20s. I, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, the fear, there's always going to be risk attached to everything you do in life. There's risk attached to you driving a car, walking outside, you know what I'm saying, being inside because some people are about accident prone. They People be slipping and falling in the shower, you know what I'm saying, there's risk going to work, but you can't be walking around paranoid. Oh my God, what if I go outside and get struck by lightning or what if someone shoots me or what if someone blah, blah, blah. What if I fall down the stairs? You don't need to be, that's no way to live. What kind of way to live is that? Invest in the stock market. There's risk attached to it, but the reward is much greater. And the risk, as long as you don't get your emotions too tied into it, as long as you do the proper research, as long as you understand the simple logic behind why there's risk to the stock market and how the reward can be so much better. And if you practice it for yourself and see, oh man, this actually isn't that bad, then you discover that all the risk that you're associating with the stock market and life in general is just all in your head. You don't overthink when you go to Target, do you? You don't overthink when you go out to eat, do you? You don't think about all the bad things that can happen, do you? Because that's not a rational way of thinking. So the stock market is... It's more secure, in my opinion, than just having thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just sitting in your bank account. It's more secure because those thousands of dollars are depreciating. They're not going up very much, but inflation is going up quite a bit. At least you could counteract that with investing. And here's a bonus tip. If you're too nervous about individual stocks, there's, there's things called ETFs and index funds, which are basically baskets with the best stocks in the world. I'll have to make a whole video dedicated to that because not all ETFs and index funds are made equal, but basically it's a blend of percentages of different types of investments. And they don't cost a ton. They are still pricey just like stocks, but they don't cost too, too much. They can be like 200, $300. And you can get a lot of growth out of them without so much of the risk associated with it. So we'll go over that some other time, but that's just a bonus tip. Thank you, shout out to all of you guys who are still watching the video. I actually talk about these in depth in my book, The Wealth Journey, so check that out as well. Also, if you haven't already, check out my book. It's called The Wealth Journey. It talks about saving, investing, budgeting, how to deal with things as life happens. There's so much personal growth and there's so much financial management in that book. It's, it's very, I made it entertaining and I also made it very, very, very informational. So I think you'll very much like it. So check it out if you haven't checked it already. All in all, stocks are invented to make you money. There is risk associated. There's also risk associated with having a job. Like we don't need to get too into the whole risky thing. Like that's like kind of, it's kind of like saying, well, I have a job, but what if I get fired? I have a job, but what if the company shuts down? It's like, look, man. I don't know what to tell you if you're thinking like that. I was like, you're on this earth. Like the probability of you being here was so slim, yet you're here. And all you can think about is all the risk associated. Like, I just wanna break that mentality. You need to be aware of the risk for sure, but that's where research comes in. Once you know and you're educated on the actual risks of the stock market, you won't be as scared, I guess, to invest. And like, I was hard on myself for the longest because I was scared of investing. And now I realize the, several thousands of dollars I missed out on from not investing. You saw that face I just made? Because I'm low-key still salty about it. That's why. So I don't want you to feel that same way toward yourself. So I'm just saying, think about it like that.